Hey everyone, Valorant here, and today I want to talk about the Grim Eclipse Intellect Trinket that drops from Rygalon. Last week I looted this trinket and couldn't trade it, so I figured why not mess around with it. Uh, then I realized it actually sims really well for a lot of specs, uh, especially specs that highly value haste. In fact, it consistently sims as my best trinket. So whether you're here because you saw it on, I don't know, Blood Mallet or Toe Grinders Mage Sims or maybe just on your drop optimizer, whatever. I've been testing this thing all week and I'm going to break it down for you. Uh, unfortunately, there's a lot to unpack with this trinket, but it does actually have huge potential. So I'm going to do my best to cover everything. So how does it work? First and foremost, let's look at the tooltip. You can see this trinket has two separate effects, uh, which has been a very common theme among raid intellect trinkets so far throughout this expansion. First up is the damage effect, and on this trinket, Blizzard was nice enough to put the two effects in two separate paragraphs here. Uh, manifests a quasar which orbits your target, blasting it with 15,000 yada yada. Damage is variable. Uh, cosmic damage over seven seconds. Pretty straightforward here, it's damage dealt over seven seconds. But this is not a damage over time dot debuff on your current target like the tooltip suggests it is. Uh, in fact, you'll see here that it seems to attack a random target near your current target, uh, which doesn't really match the way it's described in the tooltip. Uh, it's worth noting that I did also test this in Stormwind, where there's these little rats running around the target dummies, and it would actually attack the rats, which kind of wasted some of the damage. Uh, now, is this gonna cause you like any performance loss in raid or keys? No, highly unlikely. Now, some of our previous raid trinkets, especially in this expansion, were much better than expected because their damage effect scaled with our secondary stats, like crit, haste, versatility. Uh, in fact, if you've been following my channel since the beginning, thank you, uh, you may recall I did a similar video on the Glyph of Assimilation from Castle Nathria. Uh, well, that's a big part of why this trinket is very good. I've done a little testing on secondary stats and it appears to scale with versatility, and crit. Adding 32 versatility on my character via ring enchants added a little under 1% damage to the dot effect on this trinket. And over an entire evening of raiding with this trinket, its crit rate was spot on, exactly at 33.3%, which exactly matches my Frost Mage's crit rate. It does not appear to scale with haste, uh, as it always hits exactly seven times every time you use it, regardless of your haste. Uh, next up is the haste effect. After seven seconds, the Quasar stabilizes, creating an event horizon for 10 seconds, which grants you 562 haste, pretty huge, while within its perimeter. Now, remember that, it says while within its perimeter. And there's definitely a bit of nuance to how this works, okay? So after seven seconds, it places a very small blue circle on the ground. And if you stand near it, you get that massive haste buff for up to 10 seconds. Notice I said near it. Obviously the tooltip says while you stand within the perimeter of the circle. Well, the circle is very small, right? You actually do not have to stand within it. Uh, so fortunately there's several things about it that work in your favor. Number one, it kind of works like a mage's rune of power, where the graphic on the ground is really small, but you actually get the buff when you're near it. You don't have to be in the circle. And in my experience, it seems to be roughly about four to five yards away from the center. And you'll see I've got the buff here. Obviously, this could be a little daunting for classes like Mage that, you know, occasionally need to plant in a certain spot for Bruna Power and things like that, right? But in my playtesting, it was almost always possible to be within the buff radius of both Bruna Power and the Hay Zone, especially if you use weak auras that track the effective radius of Bruna Power and things like that. Uh, number two, before it spawns the Hay Zone, it will always give you this little white visual cue that tells you where it's going to spawn before it actually spawns. So with a little careful planning, it's actually pretty easy to get the full 10 seconds of haste. Number three, it always spawns slightly ahead and to the right of your character. 
Uh, I did have one time while testing this on target dummies, where it spawned almost 20 yards away. And I'm kind of guessing about the distance, but I blinked over to it, which is 20 yards, and I landed pretty close to it. However, I could not find a single time in an actual raid instance where it spawned any further away than 10 yards at most. Um, I think that if it can spawn further away like that, uh, it happens very rarely, if ever. Um, it never spawned to the left of me, and it never spawned behind me. Now, we talked a little bit about how this trinket sims very well. And the thing you have to know about sims is that they're basically in a vacuum where the actor, aka the player, plays perfectly and never moves, never gets any mechanics, etc. Unless you override something in the input. And the trinket actually has two override lines attached to it in SimCraft. The first one here is the dot duration, basically saying if the dot doesn't last the full seven seconds for some reason. Uh, but I'm more interested in the second one here, which is how much of that 10 seconds haste buff the player gets. And it's funny, so by default, they've actually set this to 0.9. In other words, 90% or nine out of 10 seconds. So when you see this trinket showing up high on your drop optimizer or whatever, that's actually accounting for you delaying one second every time you get the buff. Maybe with the visual cue before it spawns, you know, you feel confident that you can get the full 10 seconds every time. Uh, and if you want to override that code for your own sims, well, that's really easy to do. Just copy this code right here, paste it down in the custom APL box on Raidbots, and change this to whatever you want. And I'll put that code down in the video description as well. Uh, out of pure curiosity, I actually set this to zero. In other words, effectively completely ignoring the haste buff. Just using the dot effect, never stepping foot in the haste buff whatsoever. And surprisingly, long story short, it still simmed as one of my best trinkets. So in other words, even if some mechanic forced you out of the buff zone, uh, just from the damage alone, this is actually still a very solid trinket. So after all that testing, what's my verdict? Well, I used this trinket for an entire raid night of reclears, and honestly, it really grew on me. Uh, at first, I thought about going boss by boss in the raid uh, in this video and talking about all the mechanics that can force you out of the buff zone and stuff like that. For instance, Zymox is a perfect example, right? Like if it lands inside a trap, you just can't use it. Uh, but I realized, well, A, that would make this a really long video. Uh, and besides, it's not really necessary because not only does it spawn in a certain spot near your character, but it's also entirely up to you when you choose to use it. So if you know the fights, you can hold it briefly until you know that mechanics won't push you out of it. And while the haste buff is obviously really strong for specs that favor haste, like Fire Mage, Demo Lock, uh, the secondary scaling also makes it pretty good for specs that value high crit and versatility as well. Uh, I think really the only spec who won't want to use this trinket is probably Arcane Mage. A lot of high-end raid trinkets over the last several years have had some kind of additional positioning requirement to get the most out of them and this one is no different. But looking at it in the context of the current raid, I think the advantages outweigh the disadvantages. Uh, I don't think there are too many raid mechanics that would cause conflict with this trinket that can't simply be outplayed by smart positioning and timing. So that's pretty much it, guys. I hope that this video gave you a little more information to use this trinket, roll on this trinket, not roll on this trinket, whatever the case may be. If you like this video and you want to see more content from me, please consider giving me a like and subscribe. I'll see you next time. Thanks, guys.